Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from Leak Code called Transpose Matrix. It's an easy, let's get started. Given a 2D integer array matrix, return the transpose of matrix. The transpose of a matrix is the matrix flipped over its main diagonal. So this diagonal over here, switching the matrix's row and column indices. In this first image, we see that we have 2, 4, negative 1 um, as the first row, and this becomes the first column. The second row becomes the second column, third row becomes the third column. We're basically switching over or flipping over its main diagonal, which is this y equals negative x axis right here. So 2, 5, 6 stay where they are. Everything else is sort of flipped over it. So 4 becomes, um, takes the place where negative 10 was, and negative 10 takes the place of 4. Negative 1, 18 switch, as do negative 7 and 11. And we have example 1 and 2 here, but to make it more readable, I'm actually going to reformat it like this. So we see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as example 1, our first matrix. And here we can see that, again, you know, we're switching that first row to become that first column. Same with the second row, it's becoming the second column, as is the third. And we can also look at it from the vertical sense, so 1, 4, 7, our first column becomes that first row. Essentially what's happening is 0, 1 becomes 1, 0. 0, 2 becomes 2, 0. 0, 0, switching with itself just stays where it is at 0, 0. And same exact thing with example 2, right? 1, 2, 3, row becomes a column. 4, 5, 6, the second row becomes the second column. So we have some constraints over here. But how do we actually make a transpose matrix given our input? Well, it's given right in the question itself, right? All we're doing is switching the row and column indices. So for every index that we come across in the input, all we have to do is switch its row and column indices. So 0, 0 would stay 0, 0, and of course we don't actually switch 1, but 0, 1, the 0 with row and first column, now moves to the 0 with column, first row. So 0, 1 now becomes 1, 0. 0, 2 becomes 2, 0. 1, 0 becomes 0, 1, and so forth. So all we need to do is iterate through and switch it to get our resulting matrix. Can we do this in place though, right? If we're just switching these, can we just swap these in place? If we're given a square, if in somewhere in the problem it said that we would only be given a matrix where M and N, the rows and columns are equal, it would work. Otherwise it wouldn't because say we have example two right here. Three is at position zero two. Now this in the transpose needs to go to two zero and there is no third row right here. So we would actually have to change the shape of the matrix and then populate it. So what we're going to do for this problem is figure out what the dimensions of our current matrix is and make another output matrix with the opposite dimensions. And you know, it doesn't need to be populated with anything. It could be none, it could be zero, anything. And as we iterate through the input matrix, we populate the output transpose with the reversed row and column indices. So let's go ahead and code all of this up. To code this up, the first thing I'm going to do is find out my um, dimensions for the input matrix. So the number of rows and columns that I have. So rows would be the length of the matrix and column would be the length of the matrix of index zero. So length of the matrix would be how many rows we have and length of matrix zero would be like any that first index. And the length of this would be the number of columns that I have. Now I want to make my output matrix with the opposite dimension. So output is going to be equivalent to, and I'm just going to populate every cell with zero. So zero times how many columns do I want? I want columns the same number as the number of rows that I have in my input. So we're going to have zero times rows for the number of columns. And we're going to do this column times for the number of rows. So 0 times rows for i in range columns. And if you're not familiar with 
this comprehension, I'm just going to go ahead and print my output just so we can see what this looks like. So we have, of course, the wrong answer right now, but with our test case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we form this output matrix. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do 10, 11, 12. This way, it shouldn't just be the same thing as our input. We should now see, ideally, um, four columns for every single row that we have. So we had one, two, three, four rows before, and now we have four columns, and we had three columns, so we have three rows right here. This is our output matrix, and now all we have to do is iterate through our input. So four r in rows and 4c in columns output of r c r is going to be equivalent to a matrix of r c so here we are switching the row and column indices and all we have to do in the end is return output so let's go ahead and run this code Runtime error, four R in rows. This should be range. This is a number. So four R in range rows and four C in range columns. These are easy to each other. Accepted and let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted as well. Before we leave, let's actually run through an example just so we can see what's happening line by line. And I am going to be using example number two for this. So this is our input matrix and we want this transpose right here. So first thing we are going to figure out is the number of rows and the columns for this. We have one, two for rows and one, two, three, four columns. What is our output going to have? So output is going to do zero times rows. So this is zero and we're gonna do this row times, so two times. So zero and zero. And then we do this for i in range columns. So we have three columns and we are going to do this three times. One, two, three. And let's reformat this so it's a little bit clearer. This is our output matrix right here. So as we can see, we have already formed the shape that we are looking for. Now we go ahead and iterate through our input. So what is R is zero right now, and C is also zero for R in range rows. So for R in zero to two and C in zero to three, we loop through. Output C R is equivalent to matrix R C. So what is in matrix zero zero? This is one one. And in output CR, so 0, 0, we're going to put 1. So this now has 1. We are back in this for loop right here. So C is now 1. What's matrix RC? So 0, 1 is 2. And we put 2 in CR. So we're going to put 2 in 1, 0. So this is 2 right here. Let's go back into this for loop, bump this up. 0, 2, matrix of 0, 2 is 3. And this is assigned to output three, zero. So three, zero is right here. This is three right here. We are done with this for loop. So we go back up into R. So R is now one and C is back to zero. What is that matrix one, zero? That is four right here. So four is now going to be put into zero, one right here. We are back into the for loop. Now we have one, two, which is, sorry, this should have been one. We were at zero originally, so now we are at one, one. So one, one would stay one, one. So again, this is the axes right here. So those numbers wouldn't change. So this would just say five. And now we go ahead and go back into two for C. So this is six at one, two, and we put this at two, one for our transpose. So this would be six right here. And that's exactly what we are expecting our transpose output to be. 
Now talking about space and time complexity, for space we are storing the exact same number of elements, so that is O of um, n if n is the number of elements we have in our matrix, and for time we iterate through the entire matrix once in a one-pass solution, so that is also O of n for time. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below, otherwise I will see you next time.